All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Earth's Mightiest Comics, where we talk about the bad shit that we read so you don't have to read it yourself. Uh, Unless you want to. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Basically, this is a show about Marvel Comics. We go through, we read 10 Marvel Comics each week from 1961 to present day, and we break them down! And uh, there are some weird ones today. My name is Arden, as always, one of the hosts here, and with me is my other host, Sebastian Villanova. How are things going? Things are going great. This is weird for us. We just came off recording the Dark Phoenix episode. Yeah. So we've been talking for a while already, so we already know how each other is. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything fun happened this week? Oh, uh, you know, just... No, I got no. my car saran wrapped. I I'm not gonna I'm not going to call out names, but you know who you are if you're listening to this. Well, what was the point of that? I didn't really get the... They're just pranking me. Just, just pranked? Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Uh, I also went to... Uh, I went to a comic store yesterday, and Ooh. they had some some classic stuff, man. They had an original Fantastic Four number one Dang. for $7,500. <laughs> they had Whoa. an original Avengers number one for $11,000. Oh, wow. uh, they had some ones we read in there. They, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there. It was super cool to see. Well, that's, uh, pretty, that's, pretty, that's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, they recently got robbed, which is unfortunate. Oh, they yeah. had a whole bunch of comics stolen from them, uh, which, is a, which is a bummer. So yes. I hope... I hope we figure that out. Okay. So, yeah, we're doing another podcast. We're here. Just just doing our thing. There's some not great ones this week. Uh, <laughs> no, just like last week. It's... Yeah, it's pretty much more of the same from last week. Yeah. So, uh, it'll probably be another short episode as well. Uh, so, uh, let's. we're just going to get into this right here. Yeah, Starting yeah. with Journey into Mystery 87. Prisoner of the Reds. This is another Thor one. And if you can't tell, it's about communists. That is correct. So we start, starts with uh, the wife of this famous scientist. Yeah. And her husband has defected to the communist side. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and he's, he's not the first one to do this, no, Sebastian. No, he is not. If you he, didn't know. He's the, he's the fifth, fifth one. A yeah, bunch, of, bunch of famous scientists are defecting to the communist side, and they right. don't know why. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why. So, Don Blake, the alter ego of Thor, yes. he hears about this. He flies to D.C. to visit a military friend of his. It's like a general. Yeah. So, he's like, yo, I want to figure out what's happening here. Let me fake invent this bioweapon. And then see how the communists are getting these guys to defect. Right. So, Don goes back to his lab. And he tells the world that he's made this weapon. He's like, I got this big new weapon. So this photographer shows up and is like, yo, can I take some pictures of you? And Don's like, yeah, sure. But, plot twist. It's a communist. It's a communist. <laughs> <laughs> of course. He yeah. Looks like this. The camera looks like this, like, what, gas? It shoots out gas, yeah. Gas. But it's not gas that knocks him out and hypnotizes him. Yeah. <laughs> Which yes. I don't think is a thing. Which is weird. Like, yeah. Well, I guess it'd make more sense. It'd help with writing the letters and... Sure, I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of hypnotizing gas, because I don't think that's a thing that could no, work. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, so it's then revealed, this kind of shows how the, the communists are getting these uh, scientists. And they make him write this farewell note, basically saying, I've defected to the communists. Like, like all the other scientists. Right. So they take him back to Russia, and he yep. wakes up in a cell with the other five with scientists. The other scientists, they explain to him... About what's going on, how they capture them to make them work for them, but they are they didn't want to, and they're making, it, the communists are making the scientists' lives hard because they keep on saying no. Correct. So then some guards come in, and they put all the scientists in these separate cells. So they're like, yo, yeah. safety in numbers, man. Like, they're going to try to get strength off of unity. So but Don is like, well, this is convenient. I can change into Thor now. Yep. So, oh, man, yeah, okay. So this is where we get into some... Some juicy shit here. Thor breaks out of his cell, of course, but he doesn't just, like, break down the wall with Mjolnir. He twirls it around to make a shockwave. Yeah. And that just breaks the wall? Breaks, breaks the wall, and then the communists are about to fire their weapons at him. He just rubs his hands against Mjolnir, and it makes this blinding light. Yeah. Which, with the, based off the friction, which... Yeah. Yeah. So then he triggers this trap door somehow. I forget how. I read this a while ago. Yeah, I don't... And he falls into a tank full of Ooh, sharks, sharks. A water tank full man, of sharks. Man-eating sharks. Right. Again, he doesn't plans. just beat them up. He makes a whirlpool. He says he says he can't beat them all up at the same time. I'm so he just... Sorry, that's bullshit. <laughs> ...makes a whirlpool and... What, ha, the whirlpool, like, what is it? Fling away? I, I ah, it does of, something. Kind of lost me there. Yeah. So he goes up 
he confronts the communists, and basically they're like, we're going to destroy this fortress, and everyone in it, including the other scientists, unless you surrender. Yeah. So he's like, okay, fine. So he's shackled by electronically charged cuffs. Mm -hmm. He is the god of thunder. Why does that have an effect on I, him? Like, I mean, I feel like he could just make a discharge off of himself and just... Yeah. Everything's broken. Like, it's right. Boom. Can he not do it without the hammer? Is that the thing? Or... I... No. He's not god of hammers. He's god of thunder. Yeah, but... <laughs> again, like, at this point, like, I mean, based off right now, he gets all of his powers from the hammer. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> So in the Still think it's bullshit. Kind of. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, his hammer's away from him for the, at this point, and it's yeah. more than 60 seconds, so he changes him to dawn. He's able to get out. He, that's actually, that's an okay use of it. Yeah. I don't mind that. And so, because he's much sm smaller than Thor, the restraints don't hold him in. He yeah. just slip out. Which, so, I don't think that's how electronically things work. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he changes it back to Thor. He busts yep. out the scientists from each of their individual cells, which are right next to each other. Convenient is abound, yeah. Communists just love to make things easy for the people that are trying to take them out. Very easily, right next to each other. So Thor uh, confronts the communists, and he again uses a thunderstorm to ask Odin to just wipe out the fortress. The fortress. And it happens, he does that. Obviously. And Thor and... just doesn't capture the criminals. No, he just... Thinks way. He's like they'll they'll just they'll deal with each other. But even if that's true, one of them will get away for sure. So like, all right, yeah, it's fine. So the scientists all sneak out of Russia, and then they return to America, and all is good except for there's more Jane and Thor stuff yeah. that's really annoying to listen to. But that's we'll get to that later in another one where it's more prominent. Uh -huh. Yeah, I am setting it at two. I think I think this. I gave this one a two as well. I uh, was kind of torn between two and three, but I went uh, two. Oh, I gave it a three, actually. Oh, okay. All right. I could maybe be topped up to a three, but maybe not also. I'm just going to leave it at two. <laughs> yeah. Next up. Oh, this is a fun one. We have a lot of threes. Actually, more twos. Right, <laughs> this, fun. this is a fun one. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one's good. This one's fun. This is enjoyable. This... Forced me to do his extensive research on flypaper. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Tales uh, to Astonish number 38. Uh, betrayed by the ants. If you couldn't tell, it's an Ant-Man one. Yay, Ant-Man. First appearance of prominent Ant-Man villain, Egghead. Egg uh, head is literally an egg. It's yep. So very, very literal. The story, it starts out, the criminal underworld is kind of like, yeah, we can't beat Ant-Man with force. We have to use some brains. Yeah. They've tried, and they've, they stopped crime because of Ant-Man. Right. So because of this, they turned to Egghead, who is this genius. He works for the government, but he was fired because he was suspected of conspiring with the communists. Always communists. Yep. So Egghead agrees to help them, and he basically has this plan. He's going to turn the ants against Hank. Yeah. So he studies these ants for a while. There's one point where he says... Ants don't use sign language. Obviously not. Yeah, no shit, dude. They, <laughs> they don't, don't have, have like they any. They don't have hands. Right. They don't have fingers. Uh, so he manages to learn how to t tune into their electric signals, basically letting him talk to the ants. So he tells the ants to tell Hank that this valuable necklace will be stolen, and to lead him into a window where there will be flypaper, which is going to trap him. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't make sense if it traps flies and right. flies inside the ants. Traps Ant Man. Maybe. Hello. I have some questions on that. We'll get to that in a little bit. I realize now that's a flaw. Yeah, we'll there's a bigger place. section about flypaper. We'll talk about that because I I looked up flypaper for like a good half hour trying to figure out if this was accurate. I'll save it for later. I just realized something that. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. So he says basically he tells the ants if they do this he will free them yeah. from Ant Man's slavery. Slavery. And they will be the master of Ant Man. Now. Yeah. The night comes. And the robbery is put into place. Yes. So Hank goes into the window with the ants, basically exactly how Egghead wanted to do. He blows, like, wind at Ant-Man. He's got a bellows, yeah. Yeah. And Ant-Man falls into a box lined with the fly trap paper thing. Fly paper, yeah. Fly paper, whatever. So. That thing. The fly paper, though, it doesn't make Hank stick. No. Because he bathed in a chemical that makes him not sticky. Yes. Uh, and then he used springs in his boots to, to jump, jump out, out of the box. To jump out of the box. So, Hank fights the guys. 
There's one point where he like ties a cable around the dude and just it's, spins him around. It's a rope made out of nylon fibers, I right. believe, is what he said. Here's Which the thing. Is, like impossible to break, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it says like, hey, I have the strength of a man still, so I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, I, I, there's no, no. I don't care if you still have the strength of a normal guy. No normal guy can just spin a guy around on a cable yeah. like that. So, but he also drops giant flypaper onto the criminals. And onto the criminals to trap them. Here, okay, here's where I did some did some research here. All right, here we go. I could find no conclusive evidence whether or not flypaper can stick to humans. I couldn't find any evidence on that. It didn't say one way or the other. However, I did find out that it contains arsenic. <laughs> 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 Which is highly toxic to people. <laughs> so Ant-Man is basically condemning these people to death when he drops a giant sheet of flypaper on them. Also, this thing was like, what, 80 feet? Like 80 square feet? It was a big... It, it trapped five people. <laughs> like, right. completely encased. Five yeah. fully grown men. The biggest piece of flypaper I could find for sale was either a 30-foot roll or an 8 by 11 sheet. They do not sell flypaper big enough to envelop all of those people. Whew. So that's my flypaper research for you, in case you were wondering if flypaper could do all that stuff. Now you know. So, the rest of the guys tried to escape, but Hank had, like, slashed their tires on the way in. Yeah, and took their keys out of the ignition, which I don't know why you'd leave them there for. Why well, you have to help getting away? You don't yeah. have to find the hole right. and stuff, but, eh, it's fine. So, the cops arrive, they round up most of the people, uh, except that guy who, who escapes, I guess. Yeah. So, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna reference Atomic Panel here. Ant-Man is chilling, he's talking to a police officer, and he says, Egghead had a shrewd plan, but he made one mistake. He misunderstood the psychology of ants. He didn't know that the ants do not consider themselves my helpless slaves. They regard myself, themselves as my friends and my partners in the war against crime. Egghead tried to appeal to their sense of greed, of vanity, but insects have no such emotions. Unfortunately, it is only we humans who possess such primitive traits. So that happens. That's a dumb line of dialogue. But that's okay. So basically he explains the ants told him about the trap, and so he, yeah. he was able to get out of it. And then Egghead goes crazy. This is dumb, but it's also kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I found, it, I found it fun. I put it at three stars. I... Could be knocked down to a two, though. I'm, I just, I don't know. I don't know whether I'd go based on fun or on quality. Because it's kind of fun. It's fun enough for three stars, but it's definitely dumb enough oh, for yeah. two. Oh, yeah. Duh. Dumb comic, enjoyable read. I gave it a three. All right, fair enough. Next up, we have what I assume is probably Sebastian's least favorite I... for the week. Oh, my God. Well, it's not, it's not my least favorite. It's matching all my lowest ones. It's mashing on your lowest? Okay. So this is oh, Hulk Story 5, a Beauty and the Beast. That's what it's called. Disney. Disney, yeah. So we start off. The military is studying footage of the Hulk. And Ross is bas basically tells Banner, he's like, I need you to use your scientific knowledge to try to find a way to stop the Hulk because we're not cutting. Oh, yeah, military isn't doing anything. We basically the same thing that the criminals said to Egghead last, last issue. Yeah, basically. So... Ross, at this point, is basically like, I hate Banner. He's the worst. And Betty's like, oh, no, come on, Dad. He's the best. I love him. Yeah. So we get to an underground civilization. I believe this is the second one. I'm going to keep track of that because there are a ton. Yeah, the first one was... <laughs> Mole Man. Mole Man. Very first issue. Fantastic Four. Yep. I think this is the second. This... I think this might be the second. Yes. So this is ruled by Tyrannus. I thought it was Tyrannus. Yeah, I don't know. Ty Tyrannus. <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe you're right. I don't know. I thought you just pronounced it fast. I don't know. I've been trying to say Tyrannus all my life, so that could be <laughs> tough for me. <laughs> so Tyrannus or Tyrannus, Keeper of the Flame, who also apparently owns the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, he... Yeah. Uh, he basically was like, yeah, Merlin banished me to the center of the earth, and so I found I a race of creatures that I enslaved. Basically, it's exactly like Mole Man. And he's basically like, I'm going to use Betty to take over the earth. So did you have to explain why Merlin banished him? Probably just a real, real bad dude. You know what I'm saying? All right. Wrong with that. <laughs> um, so basically, Bruce goes over to Ross's house, and Tyrannus is there. Undercover as an archaeologist. He looked not like an archaeologist. <laughs> yeah. He honestly looked more like a soldier. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, I'm not going to question it. So Bruce and Rick follow Betty and Tyrannus or Tyrannus into a cave. 
where they find this very large immovable boulder, very mm-hmm. reminiscent of the first Thor. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, but, Bruce can't yeah. move it. Right. So uh, they go back to the, the place. They're like, Bruce can't do it, but the Hulk can. But the Hulk can. So Tyrannus and Betty, meanwhile, are in Tyrannus' domain, where he explains to Ross via a hologram that he has kidnapped Betty, and if Ross wants her back alive, he basically won't stop Tyrannus from invading the Earth. Great plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Rick and Bruce, as the Hulk return later, and they enter the domain, and they quickly fight, but then Rick and the Hulk are both gassed, and they wake up in a cell. And they're both too, like, what? Like, gassed to move. The Hulk was like, I can't move. <laughs> yeah. I'm too numb, I think he said. Right. Might have been, I don't remember. So, Tyrannus basically explains that if Hulk wants Betty to stay alive, he'll be his slave, pretty much. Yeah. So Hulk is like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And he's entered into a gladiator fight. Not the last time that'll happen. Dude, I found this enjoyable. I love the whole gladiator Hulk. All right, there you go. It's like a precursor to Planet Hulk from like 50 years later. (laughs) It's basically, he fights this giant fire-breathing robot. Yeah. Uh, And he takes it out, and he then tries to like take out Tyrannus. Yeah. uh, But he knocks him out. Yeah, he says stop. He paralyzes Hulk. Mm Mm-hmm. And then makes him do more labors. Right. <laughs> Basically just, like, lifting shit and stuff. Yeah. Uh, walking a dam, making right. a dam, stuff like that. But Rick is able to sneak away. He yes. gets away. Tyrannus conveniently forgets about Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. He, that he, has he doesn't even ask, there. like, where'd that kid go? He just doesn't say anything. Yeah. So, eventually Tyrannus is like, yo, let's just kill the Hulk. I'm gonna, he orders his people to kill him. Yeah. Uh, but Rick disguises himself as a guard. And he sneaks Betty out of the cage. Mm-hmm. And they go and rescue, try and get Hulk. Right. They're Rick. basically like, yo, I've got Betty here, which means you're free to do what you need to do. Yeah. So he busts out. He basically brings down the entire roof of the cave down on Tyrannus' kingdom, and then they escape. Yeah. Tyrannus is like, I can't, if you do this, I'll never be able to go up to the surface ever again. He's like, whatever. I don't care. Tough stuff. <laughs> yeah. Knocks it down. I didn't love this one. Two no. stars from me. No, no, two stars. I gave yeah. it to it's not the worst Hulk, but it's not the best. All right, so going right on in the Hulk 5B. Hordes of General Fang. I didn't enjoy this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. Um, oh, my gosh. Okay, so we start the Hulk's heading back to his lair, uh, and the military catches word, and they shoot his ice missile, their, uh, yeah, their ice missile at him, yeah. which... Did show up in a previous one, right? Yeah, that was in the four. Four B or four A? Yeah. Two. Um, basically, it happens exactly as we said it would last time. Yep. Hits him, but then it melts us in the desert, and he gets away. Yeah. So he turns back into Bruce, but then he's kind of realizing that each time he doesn't want to become Bruce anymore. He wants to be Bruce less and less. Yeah. So he makes Rick promise to not let him stay the Hulk. Yeah. So we head to the village, and it's about to be attacked by the hordes of General Fang. General Fang. Before we come back to Bruce, who's watching, conveniently watching on a Bruce newscast or something, yep. that this was basically about to happen. Mm-hmm. And so he changes to the Hulk, and they book a plane to China. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't turn back to Bruce, he's just... Just chilling as the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. And so they find, they find him out, but they trigger the emergency door... And just jump out. That would kill somebody else. Somebody would not be paying attention if they get sucked out of the door. Yeah. So the Hulk just murdered somebody. So they land and they're immediately surrounded by the military. But the Hulk takes them out. And he keeps moving. And he takes out a squad of communist planes as well in the sky. Yes. So this this is where it gets... This is where it gets to be. Instead of... Instead of attacking General Planck's army as the Hulk. He decides to do it as a mythical legend in their area. And he decides to dress up as the abominable Yeti, <laughs> and he takes them out instead. He's like, they're they're gonna be more afraid of the Yeti. No, they won't. The Hulk just destroyed their entire military. Yeah, I don't. Also, Rick is like in a weird teddy bear costume. Is like, what the fuck yeah, was up with why that? He didn't need to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe it was for like warmth, because technically they're in the mountains in snowy area. I, I don't know, man. But it certainly didn't seem like it. Right. So the plan seems to work, and all the communists seem to leave, but they predict the picture of a dragon. Yes. And so the Hulk jumps into it, and then he lands into a cage, because it's a hologram. It's a hologram dragon. It's a holographic dragon. And the cage is then 
electrocuted. Right. And Hulk can't escape. Right. Uh, Rick is able to free the Hulk, though. Was it Rick? Yeah, it's Rick. I literally thought, I literally thought I read, oh no, a short circuit happened, and the electricity <laughs> cut off and he escaped. I think, I think, no, it, that did happen, but Rick was the one who short circuited it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't catch that. I literally just thought <laughs> a short circuit had happened conveniently and he escaped. I was like, yeah. wow, that, that's dumb. Whatever, screw that. So, at this point, General Fang is releasing some missiles to go, like, kill people. Kill? I think destroy the villages. Yeah. Uh, so the Hulk jumps up and he drops the missiles at the ground and he makes yeah. the army on it. He, like, did the ditch he with the missiles. He creates a cavern from the explosions and the army can't cross it. Right. Which, I mean, they could just go around it. <laughs> yeah, it can't be that big. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then, uh, but then Fang releases his paratroopers. Yeah. But then, oh my. His plan is to jump really fast over the top of some trees, bend them <laughs> backwards, which, after they flung back forwards, it would release strong winds. Right, makes like a hurricane, and... Yeah. Uh, so General Fang tries to escape... But then the Hulk bottles up a geyser, and it builds up a lot of pressure in the road. That it makes the road blow up, but it blows up exactly where Fang is at that exact same moment. Professor Hulk coming in clutch, although he's not Professor Hulk. Yeah, I don't. He I has don't. more Hulk brain. Then the Hulk takes Fang, and he drops him in the country he was attacking, and there he's like, "Have at him, do whatever you want to do to him," and then they go back to America. Woo! I want to say it's probably the worst of the batch. I gave this one star. Much deserved. Much deserved one star. Yeah, not a good one. No, no, no. Next up, Journey into Mystery 88. Vengeance of Loki. Vengeance Loki's of Loki. back. Loki's back. Woo! So, we pick up right after the events of the last Loki story, which if you didn't hear that, you can go and listen to episode two, part two, I believe is where that was. Uh, so, Odin is like, yo, Loki, you gotta stay in Asgard forever, which is less of a punishment than his last crime. Yeah, uh, of being locked into a tree for right. all of eternity. But Loki's like, nah, man, I'm so, I'm so revenge-hungry. He burns some piled leaves on the ground, and he thinks about Thor very hard. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it makes a, an image of Thor trapped in some chains. But then... He turns back into Don Blake, and Loki's like, whoa, his right. secret identity. He basically, he sees the scene from uh, Journey of Mystery 87. Yeah. So, Loki turns into a snake to sneak past Heimdall, which... Wouldn't work. No. Because Heimdall's all seeing. Right. And even if, even if he wasn't, even if he couldn't, like, see in his mind, he'd just see the snake going for it. He'd be like, oh, that's Loki, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, so, Loki goes to Don's office. Disguised as some old dude. Right. And he hypnotizes Jane, and then he goes into his office and confronts him and reveals that he's Loki. Right. He takes off his mask Mission Impossible style. Yeah. So, Loki's like, yo, Thor, fight me or I'm going to be a real bad dude. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to terrorize people. Right. And Thor is, oh man, this is a weird one. I forgot how weird this one is. <laughs> so Thor's like, okay, fine. Jane, at that moment, also leaves. Yeah. Because Loki had whispered something in her ear before he went to go confront Thor. So Thor flies to Central Park and he meets Loki there. Yeah. But also, Jane arrives at that exact moment. And so Loki turns a tree into a tiger and he, like, sends it at her. Sends it after her. He's like, either drop your... Drop the hand... Because he... Th- th- Thor he threw his hammer. hammer, yeah. So he's like... Loki's like, don't catch your hammer and save Jane or catch your hammer and... Let her die. Yeah, basically. So, he chooses to save Jane, of course. Yeah, obviously. Uh, But the hammer's away for too long, and so he changes back to Dawn. As he's going back for the hammer, Loki covers it in, like, a box. It's like a magic force field thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so he turns into a pigeon, and he goes to be a real bad dude. So Jane conveniently fainted during this, uh, so she didn't see Dawn changing. Yeah, no. And so Dawn takes her home. This is where things get really weird. Loki is terrorizing people. He turns people, like, into just white. Into nothing. <laughs> yeah. Literally, a citizen said, we're turning into nothings. Yeah. Like, and then he also, like, changes everything into candy. Candy glop. It's, he's melting cars and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. And then he... He, like, he's... and then he, like, accidentally saves America from a Russian from bomb. a Russian bomb. And, and, yeah, so the military attack him, but he makes their guns, like, sprout wings, and they all fly away. No, I think I thought he I thought he commanded pigeons to come and take the guns. No, no, no. He made the guns sprout really? wings. Yes, 
Bro, I swear, I saw pigeons. Um, oh, man. So Don puts a thing in the news newspaper. He's like, hey, Thor knows how to defeat Loki, everybody. Yeah. So Loki sees it, he's like, oh, it's, shit. This is impossible. Thor's yeah. hammer is stuck. This is all part of Don's plan. Right. So he makes, like, a mannequin Thor. <laughs> And Loki's like, well, how did you do that? Not the last time we'll see a mannequin Thor in this batch either. No, <laughs> it is not. So, yeah, so Loki sees Thor there with the hammer, and he yep. doesn't see the hammer under the force field. So it turns out that it's the mannequin, and then so Loki lifts the force field, and then Don just runs in and grabs the hammer, but why couldn't Loki see it through the thing? I don't know. Thor doesn't have magic powers. He couldn't, like... own magic Right, there's no reason that he would not yeah. have been able to see the hammer. Yeah, no, definitely not. So, uh, Don grabs it, turns into Thor, Loki yeah. turns into a pigeon. Yep. His they, signature move, it seems like. They try, they chase each other down, yada yada. At, this, at one point, uh, Loki lands into a bunch, in a group of a bunch of other pigeons. So Thor goes and grabs some peanuts and throws them at the ground. And Loki doesn't know to eat the pigeons, and he flies off, so that's how Thor knows it's him. Yeah. But then Thor grabs a net... From, like, a tennis court. Like, way away. And he chases after Loki, like, does, like, this weird lasso fish hook thing and catches Loki in the net. Yeah. What was why, What was Loki doing while Thor was getting the net? He had Flying plenty away. of time to escape. Like, Flying away, <laughs> dude. I think a pigeon is slower than Thor. Then go turn to another faster bird. Uh, anyway, yeah, but he just managed to after Loki, and he brings him out to Asgard. I thought this one was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. It's certainly better than Loki's first appearance. Yeah. I gave it a three. I gave it a three as well.